Okay, the purpose of this video is to walk you through what they're expecting in this ER matrix, uh, giving you some time to maybe work on it and struggle with it on your own. Uh, but I'd like to kind of give you the logic behind it because I think people find this difficult. The purpose of this ER matrix is for you to figure out which entities that are implied by the description in the lab have a direct relationship, not an indirect relationship where you have to go through one entity to get to another entity. We're talking about direct relationships. And with the information given in the lab, I see that there are one, two, three, four, five entities in this case. <laughs> one bears some discussion, and that is the difference between a class and a course. A course is just a course code and a description and a set of objectives. So you can have a course that exists on paper and there's never been a class offered because it's a new course. A class, on the other hand, is kind of an instance of a course. It's a, a, t a course that is offered at a specific time in a specific place at a specific day, etc., or online. So there is a distinction between a course and a class. A course is a concept. A class is an implementation of that class where professors, rooms, and students come together in one place, or professors and students come together online. So that is an important distinction we tend to use these terms interchangeably, class and course, but this makes a lot more sense if you uh, look at this as if the class and the course are two different things. Now, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, go through the different relationships here. This matrix has one, two, three, four, five, uh, the five entities across the column and five entities across the rows and of course the bottom half of the matrix is the same as the the uh, top, top half of the matrix so you know to avoid duplication I've just blanked out the top part of the matrix we will deal with all of the relationships one by one uh, between each entity and determine whether they are many to many one to many many to one and whether they should be have a mandatory component and I'll explain what that is later on Mandatory just means that there has to be one associated with it if you're going to let anybody enter um, a value into a, sp a specific entity. Now let's have a look here. First of all, at, at your university, each student can take many classes, and a class can have many students in it. So that's clearly a many-to-many -many relationship, which means you're going to need a junction table in your final Visio diagram. There is no direct relationship between a course and a student because a student only has a relationship with a course when they take a class. So this is an example of a relationship that is kind of remote and then would not have a, be not be represented in your Visio diagram. The student doesn't have a direct relationship with the instructor either. The student has a relationship with the class and so does the instructor have a relationship with the class. That's what brings the student and the instructor together. So there's no direct relationship between student and instructor. Now, if you had inst instructors who act as advisors to students, that's a direct relationship. However, that's not beyond the, that's beyond the scope of this lab. So there's no relationship as far as we're concerned. Now, there's no direct relationship between the student and the room either because the class is between the student and the room. It only makes sense for there to be a room assigned when a student is assigned to a class. So there's no relationship there either. Now let's look at the class course relationship. This is very important. Each course, like BIS 245, can have many different classes associated with it. But each class can only be associated with one course. I mean, you don't take two courses at the same time in the same, you know, with the same instructor, for example. There's each course can be associated with many different classes so we can offer BIS 245 at all of the locations around North America and online and that's what that M means but that class um, so each course can be associated with many classes but each class can only be associated with one course and you can't have a class unless there is a course so that's why I put one in there in red which indicates that it's a mandatory relationship you can't say each class can be associated with zero or many courses that's not allowed. Each class has to be associated with a minimum of one class and a maximum of one course, and, and a, each class has to be associated with a maximum of one course. So the minimum cardinality between class and course is one. 
Now let's look at instructor to class. Each instructor can be associated with many classes. At any given time, we teach between one and four courses, I would say, at a time. Each class only has one instructor, though. Some schools do team teaching, where you know you have two instructors in a, in a course, but in a class, but rarely that doesn't happen at this particular university. So you can see it's kind of up to the person who's defining the database to figure out what these business rules are for that specific situation. And in this case, we're saying that each class can only have one instructor, but each instructor can teach many classes. You don't want to make this one mandatory because it's there's times when you want to offer a class, but you don't have an instructor yet. You need to be able to put that class into your system. So we're not going to make it mandatory that a class has an instructor to allow for those times when we add a class, but we still haven't yet found an instructor. And then here's another one. Each class would be associated with many rooms, but each room is associated with only one class. Um, and I'm not sure I would agree with that. Let's look at that. Each room would be associated with with uh, many classes, I think, and each class could be associated with only one room. I would put this back this way. Each room can hold many classes, right? Because it's free throughout the day. But the way we do things at our university now is each class is only offered in one room because we only offer the class once. And if that's what we're going to assume for the purposes of this database. So uh, if you had done many to many, thinking of it like, you know, where you have a class at two different hours during the week or something, you know, and it could be in different classes, well, then that's fine. Um, if you did many to many, I wouldn't mark you down for it. But to, for the situation we're in, each class associates with one room and each room would have a, um, you know, could have many classes. And I'm not going to make this relationship of the one mandatory either here because you might want to put a class on your schedule but not have a room assigned to it yet. That comes later. So we'll, that's how we would define this. Now the, the relationship between instructor, instructor and course, there is none because again, instructors are related to courses through the classes they teach. And each room is not related to a course either because it's the room and the class that, that um, defines that relationship. There's also no relationship again between what room and instructor. I thought I said that earlier, but, you know, again, it's all through the class here. So all these nuns means that those are relationships are irrelevant to us. So that represents the ER matrix for this particular um, uh, database design that we're working at, and it embodies all the, the business rules that we need to implement. So my next video will focus on how to actually do this in Microsoft Physio.